Now in my mind, there's three simple rules to follow if you want to set up any camera for vlogging. One, make sensible use of auto modes. Whatever the camera does well in auto, just let it do its thing so your mind is free to vlog. Two, as much as possible, set it up so you can use it one-handedly. Because the closer you are to moving at the speed of thought when it comes to changing settings, the better. And three, save on battery life as much as possible or as much as it makes sense given a certain scenario. So let's do it for the Canon SL2. Now first things first, I'm obviously shooting the camera in movie mode and I'm going to use program auto as my preferred vlogging mode because in this mode the camera automatically takes care of the shutter speed, the f-stop and the ISO. Shooting settings. Movie rack size, of course, full HD, 50 frames per sec. Why 50 frames? You can always go from 50 to 25 in your editing software, but you can't go from 25 up to 50. Same thing when it comes to the resolution, full HD, because you can always decrease the resolution later on in post-production, but you cannot up it without sacrificing quality. So 50 frames per second, full HD resolution. Sound recording? Now, if you're using the internal audio, my preferred mode is to let the camera auto level and not use the wind filter or attenuator, but instead use these little micro wind jammers on Rycode, which do a great job. By the way, if you want to know how to install those, check out the video that I've linked up here. It goes into detail on how to do this. Now, should I choose to record my audio externally, for example, via a shotgun mic, I apply to the camera hot shoe. Usually, I also choose to manually level it. Therefore, I would set sound recording to manual, set myself up at about selfie distance away. Then I start to continuously talk into the camera using my normal voice at an easily sustainable volume. Then all that's left to do is use the rec level selector and have the audio signal level to about minus 12 decibels, indicated both by this little 12 right here and the fact that the little bars turn yellow right there. This will give you an audio signal that has both enough headroom, so you're not running the risk of distorted audio, but also has enough volume, so once you normalize later on in post-production, you're not gonna bring in unwanted noise. Since this right here seems to be the perfect setting, all that's left to do is lock that in and it's done. Again, I do not use the wind filter or the attenuator. I'd much rather use external means for wind protection, like a foam wind muff or better yet, a dead cat. Lens aberration correction. If you're using a native Canon lens, usually the camera already has the profiles installed. So to make a long story short, if you're using a lens the camera already has a profile for, make sure these options are enabled to get the best quality image. Lens electronic manual focus. This only takes effect with lenses that have electronic focus rings. Here you could change the exposure compensation, but you're never gonna do a menu dive for that. ISO auto maximum 6400 in my opinion is already the maximum. Well if you can tolerate the noise you could also set it to 12,800 but 25,600 which is only available because I expanded the ISO in a later setting is pretty much unusable except if you don't care for visual aesthetics at all. My preferred option definitely is 6400. Now picture style, which one to choose, in my opinion, depends on whether you want to do post-production color grading or not. If you don't want to do post-production color grading, my recommendation would be to use the standard picture style and just alter the setting for sharpness. 5 in my opinion works the best because it's a good compromise between an overall decently sharp image without being so sharp the very fine detail becomes ugly. Now the other settings like contrast, saturation and color tone, that's really personal aesthetic preference. In my opinion, all of them set to zero work fine for most people. Now if you do want to do post-production color grading, I would set a user-defined profile. I will completely de-sharpen, completely de-contrast, and completely desaturate. This will give you the flattest possible profile and the most range to work with later on in post-production. Color tone is really important for skin tones. Be careful with changing that, especially if you're a white person like myself. What you set here can have a way more dramatic effect than with people who have darker skin or even black skin. Basically, if you're white, be careful with changing that. If you've got dark skin, well, basically you're cool. You're always gonna look good. White balance, auto mode is fine because whenever you change lighting situations, if you're not on auto white balance, you have to manually correct for the difference. So going in and out of buildings, moving from natural light to artificial light can become 
become a problem. Usually the camera does very well in auto white balance mode, so it's just one less thing to worry about. Custom white balance for the reasons I just named, you're never going to use it when vlogging. White balance correction, also not necessary in my opinion. Movie Servo AF, of course enabled because you want continuous autofocus when shooting video. Autofocus method, face tracking plus tracking, obviously is a good choice for vlogging. Metering timer, now I have this set to 30 minutes. What that does is, although the camera is in program auto mode, which means it takes care of shutter speed, f-stop and ISO, if I hit the shutter button, I can still see what values it uses, which to me is important because sometimes I might want to change that. And setting it to a 30 minute time period basically ensures that the settings are always visible. Grid display, 3x3 to me is the best compromise between a grid that actually helps you in composing shots but doesn't crowd up the screen, which I think 6x4 and 3x3 plus diagonals really do. So 3x3 for me it is. Now shutter function button is the one right here. You can half press it and fully press it. You can have metering and autofocus by half pressing and no function on fully press. You can have metering only and no function or what I prefer to use metering and autofocus plus starting and stopping movie recording. So if you half press the camera meters and sets the focus and if you fully press down you start the recording. Of course stopping the recording is also done by a shutter button and a full press. Now video snapshot, time-lapse movie and remote controlling DSL2 will go over in a separate video. As of now all of them are disabled. Playback settings not interesting to us right now. Function settings. You can select a folder or create a new one. You can create one for each day of vlogging, for example. File numbering, continuous, makes the most sense. You can also choose to manually reset the numbering, which means you always start from zero again. But if you're vlogging and you're having different folders for different days, for example, you also want individual files inside these folders. So continuous numbering, once again, makes the most sense. Auto rotate is on. Here you could format the card. Wireless communication settings, right now, none of our concern. Auto power off, well, we always want to make sure to save on battery life. So in my experience, actually either two or four minutes works well. I will leave it on two for now. LCD brightness, usually in normal lighting situations, four is fine. If there's a lot of light and you just can't see what you're shooting on the live view, you might up this to a seven. Day time zone, language and GPS device settings don't concern us right now. Video system, basically the setting is only important if you want to play back your videos on the TV set that only supports for example 50 hertz, in which case you would need the PAL system or 60 hertz, in which case you would need the NTSC system. But since we're all pretty much uploading to YouTube, it's not that important, to be honest. Touch control, sensitive. Now you could switch the functions of these two buttons. I never saw a reason to switch that. Beeping, disabled. The lower profile you can get when vlogging, the better. Battery info, not important right now. Sensor cleaning, auto cleaning enabled, but occasionally I will hit clean now. Custom functions, exposure level increments, third stop better than a half stop because it's more precise. ISO expansion, I have turned this on. This would allow you, for example, to go to 25,600 ISO. Exposure compensation, auto cancel, enabled, highlight tone priority. If you want to take advantage of the ISO expansion on the lower end of the ISO scale, going to 100 ISO, you have to disable this because only then will you have the 100 ISO setting. If you enable it, which is what I would recommend, the camera will favor the highlights over the shadows when exposing, decreasing the risk of having large areas of highlights clip, which is something you cannot recover in post-production. Whereas with the shadowy parts of the image, most of the time in post-production, you can push it a little. But if highlights are clipped, they're gone forever. However, this means that the minimum ISO will be 200. Autofocus assist beam firing. Well, since pretty much my micro wind muffs plug the autofocus assist beam, I have this disabled. If you don't use micro wind muffs but an external shotgun mic and the beam isn't blocked you can also enable this mirror lockup disabled warnings in viewfinder all of them make sense shutter auto exposure lock button which is this button right here with the little asterisk on it i've set to autofocus auto exposure lock which means that if you push this button shutter speed f-stop and iso are locked the only option you still have and the way to unlock the settings is to use the exposure compensation Assign set button. Quick control screen makes the most sense to me. The set button is the one right in the middle of this little cook wheel. So if you're in live view, this gets you into the quick menu where you can set the autofocus method, the record settings, turn on and off video snapshot, select the auto white balance and choose and alter the picture style. So quick control screen really makes the most sense to me. LCD display when power on, display on. Retract lens on power off. Well, if you have a lens that retracts on power off, enabling this will supply sufficient electricity to the lens. Here you could clear all settings if you've messed up all your settings this can be helpful copyright info manual software url certification logo display not interesting right now display level settings since the sl2 is a beginner camera the menus have been conceptualized as such so if you 
in YouTube cameras, having all of this turned on or guided will help you in understanding your camera. However, if you're a veteran Canon shooter and you know your way around the Canon menus, you want to have all of this unguided or disabled. And that's basically how I set up the Canon SL2 for vlogging. I run it in program auto so the camera takes care of f-stop, shutter speed and the ISO. If I don't like what the camera offers me, I push this little button right here above the click wheel and use the dial on top of the camera to select my exposure compensation value. If I want to lock my settings, I use the little asterisk button and they're locked. To get out of them, just go into the exposure compensation and they're gone. Also, this right here is my preferred screen mode, although the info button will allow you to toggle between this, all info, and no info. This I use when all I want to do is frame a shot precisely and I don't want to have anything interfering with that process. Once I'm done, I go back to this mode. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.